Let's first look at how to connect our machine to the system. In most cases, the easiest method is by removing a small downstairs radiator and connecting to the valves, like so. But you could connect by way of a pump head adapter or even by removing the circulating pump completely. Whatever you feel is the best way for you as the engineer on that particular system. On an open vented system, you must first turn off the boiler, isolate the electrics, and either cap off the feed and vent or, preferably, connect the feed and vent together. Under no circumstances use rubber bungs as the pressure of the water will force them straight out. Connect your Pro Flush pump to the system. Turn off the main supply to the F&E tank and, before capping off the feed, open the connectors from the system to the Pro Flush unit. Any water in the F&E tank should drain off into the Pro Flush tank and then the F&E tank can be capped off completely. If the water does not drain from the F&E tank, then this points to a blockage in the feed and this must be rectified before any other work is commenced. Connect the Pro Flush unit to a mains water source and ensure that the dump hoses are situated safely running out to a suitable foul drain. Fill the Pro Flush tank about half full with mains water. Ideally, your chemicals should be added three to four days prior to going on site to power flush but this is not practical in hot weather when the heating is turned off. Make sure your connections to the system are open and that all rad valves are in the fully open position. Turn on the Pro Flush machine and allow water to pump round the system for approximately 15 minutes. Turn on the mains water supply to the machine until it reaches just below the maximum level, adding the chemicals if this has not been previously done. With an open vented system, you can operate the boiler at the same time as our professional machine, as the Pro Flush will operate at temperatures up to 85 degrees. Set any room thermostat to maximum and the boiler to a high setting. If the circulator is still connected and the boiler fires but cuts out after a short time, you may need to change the direction of flow by turning the diverter valve the other way. Once the boiler starts to heat the water, the chemicals will start to work and heat that will start to be generated around the system. Use the, an infrared thermometer to establish individual radiator temperatures. The gentle use of a rubber mallet can assist greatly in regaining circulation to any partially blocked radiators. If you are very lucky, all the radiators will get hot and you can think about flushing out. It is likely, however, that you will need to flush individual radiators backwards and forwards if possible for a few minutes each, changing direction where required. When individual radiators become hot, with no cold spots, and the infrared thermometer shows a good all over temperature, then isolate that radiator. That will allow the Pro Flush pump and the boiler, if applicable, to work on other radiators. You can concentrate on individual radiators one at a time if you wish. When you are satisfied that all radiators are working to maximum efficiency, isolate all the radiators except the one closest to where you are working and start to flash that radiator out to drain. The first radiator will always take longer depending on the size of the system circuit and taking into account the water in the Pro Flush tank and the boiler. Initially, Keep the level of water in the Pro Flush tank to a minimum, allowing fresh mains water in where required. When you start to get clear water in the tank, allow the mains water to fill the tank to almost maximum and control the levers to ensure the water in the tank stays at the same level. After a while, you will start to get fresh looking water outside at the dump end. If the radiator is particularly bad, you may have to quickly reverse flow, like this, in order to remove as much of the debris as possible and without recontaminating the fresh water in the Pro Flush tank. When the first radiator is found to be clear at the dump end, obtain a TDS reading with the meter. Once the reading is no more than 10% above the mains water reading, close off the radiator at both ends to prevent possible cross-contamination and open the next one in line. Continue the same procedure on every radiator until all the system is clean. 
you can then reopen all the radiator valves fully. Add the inhibitor via the tank or wait until you've reconnected the F&E tank. You can now disconnect the ProFlush machine from the system, having isolated all the valves and turned off the mains water. After reconnecting the F&E tank, fill it with water and bleed the radiators. Leave a cup full of inhibitor and add it to the water in the F&E tank to add as a biocide. When using our MagMaster, make sure that the magnets are isolated from the system and cleaned periodically. This not only removes the magnetite from the system completely, but also improves the flow of water, allowing a faster flush and the reduced use of mains water. People always asked whether TRV settings should be noted on all radiators prior to carrying out a power flush. Now this is a matter for the individual, but bear in mind that the flow of water around the system will be much improved and therefore TRV settings will probably need to be redone anyway. If you require more detailed information about power flushing, go to our website at www.proflush.co.uk and download the appropriate documents from the FAQ section or view other videos in the ProFlush Technical Training Library. Please contact us direct if you have any queries.